Well, hola, amigos. I know it's been a long time since I rapped at you, but I've had some stuff going on. A lot of work business, and I'm just glad to be home again so I can share this project with you. This is the Build Your Own Custom Boutique Guitar Pedal Construction Set, etc. So what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to have a big reveal because I just got a circuit board in the mail. I'm going to show you my pedal enclosure and the electronics that I want to put in it. So first of all, this first pedal is going to be based on the Axolotti. If you don't know the Axolotti, it is definitely one of the most incredible things to ever happen for um, do-it-yourself digital signal processing. has a graphical user interface that lets you put all kinds of sounds. has a huge uh, memory chip in there for delays, and plus it's got your built-in audio and your built-in MIDI. And then it's even got USB headphone jack. You can do an incredible amount of stuff, attach all kinds of stuff to the GPIO. Think of it as an as an Arduino that was just completely designed around audio and music and it happens to be designed by a guy named Johannes Talisman who is uh, something of an expert when it comes to embedded programming and music and all that jazz so the next thing I'm going to show you is the box that I'm going to use. This is, you're probably familiar with it if you're already in the pedal building game. This is a Hammond 1590DD. I like to call it the double wide. Um, it's real big, which, you know, has the disadvantage that takes up a lot of space on your pedal board, but at the same time, it get, lets you fit a lot of electronics, and that's absolutely necessary if you're going to put an axolotl in there. See, that sucker just barely fits. And now let me show you what I see in seed the other day, just before my recent business trip took me to Mexico City of all places. Now, be patient with me. This is an error I made when I was doing the CNC right here. Um, it got, got something or other wrong, and it went through and it just cut a hole there. Also, these were from some other experiments. But the point is, you see that there are nine holes across and then one big one here. And so what I want to do to populate this is I'm going to put eight pots in there and then in the middle I'm going to have a selector switch. Now, one reason that I put eight pots on there is because in my experience designing new pedals, you need to have a lot more knobs on there than your average guitar pedal. Um, you know, your average guitar pedal, you get it down to maybe three knobs, maybe four or five, something like that. But when you're experimenting with something new, there's just so many parameters that you have to adjust and tweak, whether it's offsets, filter cutoffs, gains, stuff like that. And it just takes time to recompile. So that's why my experiments, my experiments and my experience has told me we need a lot of knobs on there. So that's, uh, you know, we're taking advantage of the double wide nature. And now for the big reveal, I ordered this just before my business trip and it arrived. So let's open this sucker up and see what's inside. It is a custom circuit board that I've designed that's supposed to hold all of those knobs and the selector switch. And then it's going to, um, they're going to mount directly to the top. And then it's also got an Axolotti header on there. So look at that. Oh my God, that is just, just beautiful. I've been dreaming about this. I taught myself KeyCAD in order to use this. You know, I was a user of Eagle for a long time, but if you don't have a license for Eagle like me, then you can't make something this big. And so it was just finally time to go to KeyCAD, KiCAD, whatever. Not so hard. I strongly urge you to, uh, to, to check it out. You know, if you have experience with other programs, there's a lot of other, a lot of little tutorials on there. And the export is actually really easy because this company, Osh Park, they have, um, you can just upload your KiCad files to them directly. You don't even have to do all the Gerber separation and all that stuff. Um, I'd love to know how to do that, but honestly, I have so much on my plate. Um, it just makes it really convenient. And by the way, this is not a paid advertisement yet. Hint, hint, Osh Park. I always praise your videos and I've been using you for a million years. And I love the little stickers that you sent me. Never fails. They always send a sticker. I have a, a stack 20 feet high of those. I love them. All right. So what I'm going to do next is I want to see if the knobs that I've chosen, that's these here. And I chose them. I've used them in many designs. Don't know the part number off the top of my head. I think it's a PK110KH. Um, you, can, you can lay these out pretty densely. And... 
This is the uh, one of 16 selector. I'm going to be honest with you here. I wanted, I think 16 steps is a lot, but um, I couldn't, I couldn't get the eight or the 12 step right now. So, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to have the extra steps, but then again, it's a little more intense to think about. So it's kind of a design decision. Anyway, my point is that I had to draw all of these layouts by hand in KiCad uh, based off of the mechanical drawings. So I don't even know if these fit or not. So tell you what, let's do this, the test fit now and cross your fingers for me. First one is in the middle. That's not bad. Let's try and push those through. Oh, you know what? That looks like... Yeah, that looks like a little bit of a mistake. Like, perhaps the the spacing is good, but I don't think those holes are big enough for these terminals. Yeah, definitely not. Let's look at that. Yeah, I don't even need to measure it. Okay, so that's a mistake I made. Um, not the end of the world. A lot of people actually just break these things off. Uh, so that's probably what I'll do just for my, my first couple prototypes. You don't really need those things, but they do add a lot of strength. So I'll fix that on my board. But yeah, okay. But it looks like the important stuff, the terminals, those at least fit. So that's good news. Now let's move on to the pots. There we go. Okay, so those holes are big enough. Oh yeah, and that alignment is great. Look at that. Just snap right in there. That's gonna be really that's gonna be really easy to solder because they they snapped right in. Uh, I don't have to do any goofy stuff with masking tape or anything like that. Yeah, okay, I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna populate this thing. Maybe I'll even solder them into place. Uh, I'm going to press pause. You don't have to bear with that. And then let's see how it fits into the body. All right. Okay, that was a quick soldering job. And voila, there we have it. This is the beginnings of a very beautiful pedal. Um, eight analog pots and one digital selector. So what I wanted to do was look at the fit into the body. So let's try that. And spoiler alert, it doesn't fit exactly well. It looks very close from here, but if you look at the beginning of this one, you can see that it kind of creeps forward. And by the time you get there, there's a little bit of space. Now, why did that happen? Well, I went ahead and I did some measuring with the calipers. I chose 0.7 inches as the perfect distance between pots after testing a lot of different distances. And that's the way I laid these things out. If you look at, um, say, the terminals, you can see from the beginning on the left there to the next one, that's 0.7. Right, that's 0.7. And it's 0.7 all the way until you get to... Uh, the big guy here you can kind of force one half that's a, that's okay it's not the end of the world you know this this case has uh, been through you know like I said a few mistakes it takes a few you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet etc 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 so I'm just gonna keep moving forward what I can do is electrically test this guy and just make sure that all the electrical signals are working and that I can indeed talk to an axolotl. I want to thank you for watching and uh, if you're interested in the final project, the final product, what I'm really hoping to do is make these cases available to people who have axolotties. And for people who don't know the magic and the power of the axolotties, I want to be able to make the whole entire thing available. So if you're interested when that comes out, send me a message or leave a message in the comments, etc. And, you know, right now it's really hard to get axolotties. Um, the, the founder of the Axolotti, like I said, is a, is, is a very bright person, but he's also a bit elusive. So what I'm hoping to do is get a group of maybe 25 or 50 people together who all want one of these cases for an Axolotti uh, complete system and then uh, make them available to customers, both with my knobs board and the case and an axolotl in there so you're just ready to go and while i'm dreaming i want to use the sd card inside the axolotl 
if you didn't know that's another amazing feature and make a few of my own custom Noah Vodder effects and put them in, in and uh, sell them along with the pedal so you get like one of my delays one of my distortions and some other creative imaginative stuff that I'm thinking of so once again thank you for watching like and subscribe if you want to stay in touch with the very dramatic and exciting process that is uh, do-it-yourself digital signal processing and effects development etc and uh, we'll see you in the next vid